Winter is coming for the Northern Hemisphere. And the topic of today's video is Bitcoin Mining Heat Reuse, a book I've just finished, which explores the idea of essentially the technical applications and feasibility of your heating system being a computer, a Bitcoin miner, that you're paying that same energy bill, getting that same heat in different ways and different complexities and different delivery systems, but that extra piece in the middle, a computer that flows energy into your wallet as money, Bitcoin. And so yeah, the topic of today's video is a little bit of a book review. This book I would recommend to people that are within technical industries of an electrician, a HVAC guy, boilers, plumbers, these sorts of trade jobs where Bitcoin mining is going to ever increasingly be in demand for people's homes, heating systems, large scale infrastructure projects such as in Finland where they are doing district heating using these computers, Bitcoin miners, computers that create heat. If you put a kilowatt of electricity into one of these computers, a kilowatt of heat has to be removed from it. Now we can just waste the energy like the massive scale data center mining that you may have seen, whereas these large infrastructure projects that just buy power at very cheap rates and remove it from the computers as quickly as possible and dissipate it into the atmosphere or in a hydro or immersion called liquid system. And the difference there is, what if that system was back to being for the individual of the Bitcoin network in their home with a bill that they already pay? I'm sure you pay a heating bill now as it's starting to get cold. And what if that heating system could be replaced, retrofitted, or added to with a computer that pays you money every time you need heat. And what that does is it shifts the economics a bit of Bitcoin mining, where more of the Bitcoin network is going to be heating systems that may not seek 100% uptime, like the hosted mining or public miners seeking to buy the latest machine and get the highest uptime. But the older chips and devices and components being used as heating system solutions. But this book also explores that we are very, very early in what Tyler referred to, I believe, as Bitcoin as the niche, mining as the niche of the niche, and mining as a heating system as the niche of the niche of the niche. So we are so early on this enterprise, but it's massive. There's a massive opportunity because even if a tiny fraction of global heating demand was provided by what he refers to as hash rate heating, it would double, treble the Bitcoin network, which I believe would demonetize a lot of public miners. So there's this transition that we're seeing from existing mining, uh, mining manufacturers producing their own heating systems. So what are they seeing? They're spending money developing a heating system solution. They see it as well. And so on the consumer side, it's bringing it into your perception. So this book is available free online, but obviously you can buy it as well in physical copy. And the, the book is really written for those that are going to be the early adopters, the builders. Now it's great to read as an educational aspect, but if you're going to be a builder or purchaser of a hash rate heating system, a heating system in your house or for your pool, keep the greenhouse warm or something like that. I see the hash rate heating phenomena becoming a massive opportunity for individuals. Seriously, people being able to bring hash rate back to the individual is the exact decentralization that we need from the Bitcoin network. And books like this are the early dominoes in the process that allows that decentralized future to come into fruition. So let's explore a few concepts with this. Air versus liquid. So you have, take the example of a hairdryer. If you put your hand on the hot exhaust really close, it's gonna be really hot. You put it further away and it cools down really quickly, the dissipation of the heat in the air. And where I'm going with this is, if you use a Bitcoin miner in an air-cooled solution, that would be combined, combined with a HVAC system. 
that allows for the transfer and movement of air around the, the building or your, your property or some other commercial aspect. But if you are trying to travel the heat much further, farther, or say for a pool, you need something that carries the heat much further. And so you need a liquid cooled solution, such as people that have the underfloor heating. And what they'll do is they'll have some form of hash rate heater that is uh, immersion or water. And the immersion fluid will flow through the pipes in the flooring and keep the building warm. But the difference there is you're heating the immersion fluid with a computer that pays you money. That's the difference. And so the cooling system type is not just a cooling system for the computer, but it's a heating system for the home. And that delivery does delve into all those sorts of complexities. So you've got to remember that in the Bitcoin network, there is so many nuances. You can say there's 144 blocks per day. And I always say as an average, as an estimate, because it's not every day there's 144. And so there's all these little nuances that need to be learned. And it's the same with the hash rate heating area. There's all these nuances that need to be understood, such as the outlet temperatures of really hot fluid or air into a particular system. Is it the right temperature? Is it slightly too hot? Is it not hot enough for the use that you need? There's all these different things that mean that if you are interested in having a heating system that pays you Bitcoin for the very energy bills that you are already paying for, um, you need to have a particular individual study of your house, home, business, off-grid community, whatever it is, it needs to have a particular design and structure. Just like if you need plumbing in your house, you need to have a plumber come in or an electrician. They pretty much tell you what you need and design it uniquely for your home and commercial building as the example. So it's the same with the hash rate heating side of things. The other aspect of this being so early is there's this sort of issue of Bitcoin mining being this Venn diagram of it being a heating system. It leans onto the electrical sides and safety standards. And one of the concerns I have is the electromagnetic frequency. So there's particular heaters that could be on your desk or underneath your desk, but is it emitting too much uh, EMF that could be harmful to human health? Is it better to have a hash rate heating system where the actual uh, highly powerful electric components are in a really in a different room as far from say your bedroom as possible and all those sorts of things. So the fact that we're so early is great, but there is this coordination of builders and interested people that want to get these sorts of systems. And yeah, this book delves further and further into all the different nuances. It's more of a, a technical story into how things can be built, the different options, and it really just opens the palette with each section, with each chapter. And so I've got a few notes because otherwise I'll drift all over the place. The firmware side of things. So each different mining manufacturer has their own set firmware. There's other customized firmware. So we've got to be able to control these computers. If you need the temperature raised on your thermostat, that communication with your existing heating system or a new heating system where you're able to control it at the human level. We don't want to put devices that are connected off to other places in an unsecure fashion. We want it to be a very secure system. So obviously exploring those sorts of protocols are important as well. The hardware side of things, the very computer that you choose to use, the different manufacturer you get it from, or the example of Jack Dorsey's latest proto rig, which is designed that you don't replace the whole computer, you just slot out the particular hash board and maybe slot in a brand new one. So maybe we see Jack Dorsey's proto rigs be customized to be a heating system. And every four year cycle, you do an upgrade program for another hash board at a better efficiency. But the number one thing of importance to really understand when exploring the idea of getting a heating system in your home and everything else that pays you money, that's such a crazy concept still, um, is uptime. Uptime is most important. So the first feasibility is, do you need heat a lot of the year? 
So naturally you could say the higher in altitude you are or the much further away from the equator to the north or right down south, you're naturally gonna be in, a, in an environment that's more cold and needs more heat for a much longer period. Your, your electric cost, if you've already got an electric heater, heating solution or another type of energy source as your existing heating solution, it's you needing to explore all these different things of can your existing system be retrofitted, changed or added to or completely removed and replaced? So you've got to explore all these nuances. But again, if it's of interest to you, please reach out. I'm sure I can connect you with someone that's in a particular area that wants to build these systems for you. And that's what this really comes down to. We want to decentralize the Bitcoin network. We want to create solutions for each other in a peer to peer way. Because there's all these different interesting areas on the finance side of Bitcoin. But this represents one of the biggest opportunities for individuals to really explore their own individual experience with the network, where they're not just holding Bitcoin, but they're also protecting the network, adding hash rate, and that is raising difficulty, which raises the sort of brute force cost to attack Bitcoin, the security budget in that sense as well. And all these sorts of things push forward a way of getting hash rate back to the individual in a world where people are concerned about what the pools are doing and the large mining participants connected to those pools and the manufacturers connected to the pools and the miners and different power sources and it all being a bit too centralized. If that's a concern to you, then you should consider a hash rate heating system as your contribution that you're already contributing to your utility provider you might as well contribute to the Bitcoin network and be paid for your protection of the network in the process. And that extra third bit is to just add a node. So if you've got your own wallet, got your own heating system as a miner, and got your own node, you're doing the read, write, and own to represent you as a complete Bitcoiner through and through. And then other few things to sort of delve into is the software side of things, that a typical heating system may uh, turn on for a very short like five minute period and then turn off and in the next hour it turns on for five minutes and turns off and so it's these little impulses to to keep the temp temperature sustained to a certain level versus a bitcoin miner which might be a bit different this device that we want to keep online as much as possible to make as much bitcoin but if you're turning it on for heat you want it off as much as possible when you don't need it, but on as much as possible when you need the heat and you're being paid Bitcoin. So it won't be turning on the computer for five minutes and then switching it off, turning it on, switching it off. You want it on at a very low, consistent rate and hitting that sweet spot where the computer is on consistently over those periods that you need heat. Uh, other things, the control side of things, I was just mentioning this, the, the control aspects of these computers, that we're so early in the days of the uh, closed source aspects of many different hardware manufacturers. And what we're going to see in the future, we hope, is so much more open source, because there's so many Bitcoiners out there people have never heard about that are developing really cool stuff and not to say the commercialization of it, but the, the, the recognition by a massive cohort of finance or Bitcoin holders needing systems that particular Bitcoiners have created solutions for and just connecting them together. This is one aspect of the Hash Power Academy that I'm really focused on. I wanna connect people that want things to people that build things. And that cross communication in this peer-to-peer -peer network is just going to be one of the most powerful things of how we're all just naturally coordinated but in a very decentralized way it's truly beautiful right the economics now i mentioned uptime that's one of the main aspects that if you don't really need heat it's sort of a waste you might as well just hold bitcoin and that's your bitcoiner benchmark do i hold bitcoin and well, in this example, pay my energy bills to whatever it is. Or are you already recognizing, hey, I spend this much annually on energy. The cost to install this system is X. My electrical bill each month is Y because my power rate is Z. All these sorts of things. So 
again, it comes back to if you are particularly interested in exploring the idea as your own heating system, as a Bitcoin mining solution, that energy is flowing to your wallet as much as it's flowing into your house as well. And that sort of system is going to require some form of study to create that, that, that understanding of your house, your situation, your existing heating system and the cost that you pay all aligns in a way that you've got a sensible payback period relative to what you are already paying. So my takeaways on the personal side of this book would be that um, this is a great start. This is a great insight for those that want to actively be a builder and maybe recognize that the, uh, the early engineers to this multi-billion dollar, arguably multi-trillion dollar opportunity of those that successfully scale heating system solutions as a collective pool of compute issuing money at a global planetary scale, that's going to be a very interesting thing where you've got a wide customer base and a way of producing money. And Tyler also mentioned some of the economic incentive structures that he saw, which was you could have a split, which is whatever hash rate your computer is producing could be split into not just landing in your wallet and payout options at the mining pool is another angle that needs to be explored. But also, what if some of that tiny amount of hash rate or payout of Bitcoin was sent to the very people helping to maintain your system that alerts and signals that your system's having a particular issue, that someone could come and fix it before it became an issue. Instead of the, oh no, my boiler's broke. Now I'm freezing cold and the guy's not gonna come until Tuesday. Oh, uh, it's Wednesday. Oh, uh, are you gonna come? I'm freezing cold. You see the issue there. So preventative maintenance is so much more important than say reactive maintenance. The, oh, something broke, which is uh, the same that people do with cars as well. If you just change the oil a bit more and get it serviced passively a little bit more, you won't have the major issues and the compounding con consequences of things breaking at the point that you pay to fix it. Get them, get them fixed where it's much cheaper to fix. And so if we have these efficiencies in society where a person could be responsible for say 300 homes of an area that have hash rate heaters and his job is to actively keep all these systems up because he's earning from all these systems. It's all this aspect of aligned incentives. And so we have just further efficient coordination of humans in society that just want to heat their homes or get paid for providing heat to homes in a fashion that just keeps everyone happy and less headaches and less cold nights in the winter. Thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed. Please go and search this book, the Bitcoin Mining Heat Reuse by Tyler Stevens. You can go to brains.com as well, but they have it free online to read as a PDF. I strongly recommend it for anyone that's of a younger age, maybe an engineer that maybe want a job in the future where they could travel around the world in the future, just fixing systems that they've got very familiar to in a world that allow you to travel, earn money and passively earn from the hash rate that you're keeping online. That would be a really cool way to be a technical engineer and travel more freely in this world. Thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed. Please go and get the book. It's free online as well. And I'll see you in the next video. Winter's coming. What are you going to do about it?